Good morning. My name's Robert Dean Steele, and this is your prayer time for today. And today we're going to be looking at the life of one of my favorite Old Testament characters. I actually just read about him a couple of days ago, and his name is Elisha. So, Father, we thank you today for Elisha. And we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful example that he is. And Lord, we're going to be looking at two or three incidences in his life that, Lord, are going to enable us, Lord, to recognize that what we need today is the power of God. So we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lord, do you remember that wonderful story in the Bible where is uh, Elijah finds himself on top of Mount Sinai? Now, this is a great story because, Lord, what's he doing there? He is trying to get some direction in his life. And as we are well aware of, you know, that's something that we need every day. And that's the beauty of your word, is the fact that, Lord, in it, we can find wonderful examples, examples given to us that will enable us, Lord, to say, if they can do it, we can do it as well. And also, he was on top of that mountain because he needed direction, and he also needed the voice of the Lord. And that's where prayer comes in. Because it's in the area of prayer where we set aside time to meet with you, where we say, okay, God, this is where I am right now in life, and I need some direction. I need you to show me what I need to do at this particular point in my life. I mean, you have to understand, Elijah had had some major victories. He had been able to stop the rain for three and a half years, and through the power of prayer, he was able to restore it, even though it took a little bit of time for that to happen. And then, of course, uh, you always have pushback. The enemy is always going to challenge what we're going to be doing. And we need to recognize that we may have great heights of usability with God. God may use us in mighty ways, but then it is in those small times, those times where we're sitting there and being applauded and enjoying the accolades of what we just accomplished when the enemy comes in and says, oh yeah, you know what's going to happen? Well, that's what happened to Elijah. Elijah got this message from uh, from Jezebel, says, yeah, you know, I'm going to kill you, you know, and he books it off down to Mount Horeb. Now, it was interesting that at Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb, he got the information about three different guys, Haziel, Jehu, and Elisha. So he leaves though that place. Now, just a little point here, and that is the fact that there was an incredible display of God's power. There was a display of the wind and the earthquake, but God wasn't in the wind. God wasn't in the earthquake. He was in the still small voice. And that's where he said, now I want you to go down and find a guy whose name is Elisha. So here is Elisha. He's out there working in the field, doing what uh, he's supposed to do, you know. And then all of a sudden, Elijah walks up to him, throws his mantle over his shoulder as if to say, hey boy, you know what? I have just chosen you to be my apprentice. You have chosen you to be my disciple. Right then and there, Elisha knew what that meant. He knew about Elijah. And he knew that Elisha had chosen him, or Elijah had chosen him to be his successor, his representative after he had, you know, moved on. Well, that's exactly what happened. Elijah and Elijah, Elisha were a tag team for a period of time. What did they do? Well, what they did was they established a school of the prophets. That was one of the side products that they did during that time. And these men young men studied under both Elijah and later on Elisha. Now, these men had the ability to be able to see in the spiritual realm. They had the ability to be able to bring God's message 
from the supernatural realm into the natural realm. They had three gifts in particular, and these are gifts of the Spirit. Number one, they had the ability to be able to see in the spiritual realm. Number two, they had the ability to receive divine knowledge. And number three, they had the ability to be able to know how to present it. That's wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. That is the cornerstone and the backbone of prophetic ministry. Now, here is Elisha. He has been working with Elijah for a little period of time. And when he was ready, Elijah was preparing to leave. Now, the prophets all knew that he was about to leave. They didn't know how it was going to happen, but God had revealed to them that they were going to be, uh, he was going to be disappearing. They weren't sure how it was. He, and uh, most of them knew it was going to happen supernaturally. So Elisha decides he's going to stay as close to Elijah as he can. So Elijah is saying, you know, I'm, I'm going now. I'm going to go for a bit of a walk. And Elisha says, hey, I'll come with you. And, uh, you know, finally, Elijah basically says, listen, I'm about to leave this mortal coil. And uh, I'm about to leave. He says, what is it that you want? He says, well, very simply, I want a double portion of what you have. What you've been doing, I would like to double. I would like to see a 100% increase over that. And so Elijah said, well, if you see me go, he says, that is what's going to happen. Well, while they were talking, all of a sudden, this incredible scene begins to happen, Lord. And it's it's incredible because he, that being Elijah, is only one of two men who actually escaped death. They never saw death. They were wonderfully translated. You know, we, the first one was Enoch, because the Bible says that he went for a walk with God, and God says, hey, you want to come with me? And Enoch says, yeah. Well, Elijah, his was quite dramatic. There is Elijah. And then all of a sudden, they're separated by a chariot of fire. That's right. There were horses with, that were fiery and a chariot that was fiery. And Elijah all of a sudden found himself being swooped away. It's kind of, you know, uh, uh, seen out of the mummy. <laughs> anyway, Lord, you translated him away. And as he was flying through the air, <laughs> the mantle or the cloak of Elijah fell down and Elisha picks it up and begins a ministry that is spectacular as far as the Old Testament is concerned. Now, Lord, I'm grateful that today you said that greater things will happen when we go to the Father, or you go back to the Father. Father, we know that that's happening today. We see miracles happening all the time. I have a friend, Lord. His name is Len Lindstrom. He has seen incredible miracles. He's seen goiters. Recently, he went to the country of uh, the Philippines. And one of the things that he saw was these giant goiters that were hanging on people, and he would pray for them, and instantly they would be healed. And also, as well, new skin came on those go where those goiters were. That is a miracle of God. It is a substantial, visible miracle of God. And that happens all the time uh, around the world. That's because you are doing incredible things. I, I think of a story that happened during a Reinhard Bonnke crusade where they actually brought a dead man to the uh, to the meetings. He had already had embalming fluid put into him, but his spouse said, I'm taking my husband to this particular meeting. Now, most of us would have been kind of put off over that, but what happened was, all of a sudden, as the preaching and as the miracles were happening, this guy all of a sudden opened his eyes, and what he had in his body was embalming fluid, that embalming fluid became blood, and he became resurrected. That actually happened in a Reinhardt Bonnke crusade. Father, you are raising people from the dead. 
We don't understand why you do it, but that's a resurrection power. There are reasons why people are raised from the dead, and there are reasons that people aren't. And we don't understand that, but we leave it in the hands of the Lord. And we say, Lord, thank you for your healing touch. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles that you do. Now, Elisha, of course, had an incredible um, ministry. He did great things, and also as well, he did minor things. He was concerned about the smallest details of our lives. One of the stories that we have is the story of the city of Jericho. The city of Jericho actually was cursed by um, by uh, Joshua, and he said that no one would be able to build it or on it or be able to drink the water. Well, Later on, there was a guy named Hiel who uh, built the the gates and also the walls of uh, Jericho at the loss of his two sons. That's what happened. Well, when Elisha came on the scene many, many centuries right later, um, the people of of uh, Jericho came to him and said, you know, we have this beautiful situation here. We are in the Jordan Valley. We're just north of the Dead Sea, and uh, it is very temperate, and it is very temperate. I have been to Jericho, and it is actually a very beautiful place. It call it the City of the Palms, and uh, it is a wonderful place. It's an oasis, basically, and the temperature all year round is over 80 degrees uh, all the time, um, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so here they say, this is a beautifully situated um, city, but we have a, uh, a terrible water supply. We can't drink the water. So what can you do about it? Well, Elisha said, I think I can do something about it. And he pours some natural substances into the water, and the water was cured. It was kind of the same situation that Moses did when he was in the wilderness, and he threw a tree into the water. And uh, it wasn't the substances that they threw into the water that made it well. It was the power of God in answer to a person's prayer. Now that is something wonderful that we can do in prayer. We can actually change situations around and bring supernatural solutions to problems that are, you know, ordinary or extraordinary. Whatever we need, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or imagine. That is the beauty of prayer. So I encourage you all the time to pray and to ask the Lord to use you in ways that you never dreamed possible. Remember, we have resurrection power in us, and James 4, 2 says, we have not because we ask not. And of course, I already alluded to Ephesians three twenty that says God can do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. There's another story about how that Elijah had the ability to be able to send messages to the king of Israel. And uh, he would warn when the Arameans or the Syrians would be planning an attack. And everybody in the Syrian court, the Aramean court, was really put off over this whole situation. And they said, who's at fault here? And someone came up to the suggestion. They said, well, what's going on is there's this prophet in the nation of Israel whose name is Elisha. And he knows what's going on even in your own bedroom. He knows what you are doing. And all the plans that you are making against Israel, well, he's telling the king of Israel. They said, well, we need to take care of this guy. So where is he? So they sent some inquiries, and they found out that he was in the city of Dothan. So what did they do? They send an army over to the city of Dothan. There is Elijah. He's having a wonderful sleep. And then he goes out, or not he goes out, but his servant goes out to prepare for the morning, and he looks off the uh, walls of the city and realizes, he says, wait a minute, who are these people? And he runs back in and he says, Elisha, there's an army outside 
looking for somebody. So there was an inquiry made, and they found out that they were actually there to capture Elisha. And now this really gets the servant of the of uh, Elisha quite upset. And uh, he says, Elisha, why aren't you c concerned about this? <laughs> and I love the answer that Elisha gives. He says, listen, those that are for us are greater than those that are against us. He says, let me open your eyes. And so he prays for him. And the servant's eyes are open. And all around, now the city of Dothan was in the valley of Megiddo. And the valley of Megiddo is completely surrounded by high hills or mountains, as they were called. And uh, all of a sudden, he looks around, and on the mountains around Dothan is the fiery chariots and the army of God. I mean, this guy walked with his own contingent of angels. <laughs> <laughs> love it. And so he sends out a messenger and they say, why are you here? Well, we're here to capture Elisha. He says, well, I know where he is. And uh, so get this, he blinds them. The entire group is blinded. And he leads them from Dothan right down to the city of Samaria. And then he opens their eyes. And then they uh, find themselves inside the city of Samaria. And immediately, the uh, king says, hey, can I kill them? He says, why would you do that? Uh, think about this. These are people that have been sent to pick up and to arrest Elijah, Elisha, to bring him back to Damascus, to, Samir to uh, Syria, and uh, who knows what atrocities they were going to do on him. But what he did was under the power of God, was able to blind them. And then what happened was, afterwards, of course, they were sent back to uh, to uh, the uh, Damascus and told the story, and it basically stopped the uh, attacks from Damascus and Assyria for, a, for Syria for a while. Father, these are incredible things that you did. I mean, what can we learn from that story? Number one is that, Lord, those that are for us are greater than those that are against us. We need to recognize that. There's a wonderful scripture found in Isaiah, where it basically says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to raise up a standard against him. And that's a wonderful promise that is given to us today. Lord, I'm grateful for the fact that, Lord, you are with us. I'm grateful for the fact that, Lord, no matter what we face, you are with us. You have the angels of the Lord camping around them that fear them. That's a wonderful promise. That really is from Psalm 91. And it's also a wonderful promise to know that there is supernatural divine help for us every single moment of the day. That's really wonderful. <laughs> Years ago, uh, I had a prophet in my church. His name was L. Duclos. And L. Duclos had encounters with angelic beings so many times in his life. And I knew it was absolutely true because, you know, he was uh, a very powerful uh, pro proclaimer of God's word and prophetic words. And everything that he said came to pass. Well, one day he was an older man at the time. He's about 85. And one day he got up out of his chair and he was walking towards the kitchen and uh, he made a decision that he was going to go to the bathroom. And he ran into his angel and the angel uh, knocked him down, but the angel caught him <laughs> and said, uh, you know, he says, Sometimes we don't know which direction you are going. He told me that story, and I was literally laughing. You know, we need to recognize that Bible days are here again. And the same thing that happened in the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament, and in the book of Acts is happening today. We just need to open our eyes. No, I, I, I know that there are people out there that subscribe to the idea that, you know, the miracles and the signs and wonders that happened during the book of Acts, you know, basically ended with the apostles. And, and if you believe that, that's, that's fine. You can believe that. I don't. The reason I don't is because I have seen incredible things that God has done. And 
I, I believe that Bible days are here right now and that we need to say, okay, Lord, what is it that you want to do? I, I read a story about a, a fellow who was called kicked out of the kingdom. And the reason he was kicked out of the kingdom or the watchtower people was because he had a child who had a club foot, was born with a club foot. And he was reading the Bible one day, and he read the scripture of Isaiah, or I should say 1 Peter 2.24. And even though it was from the uh, New World Translation, it basically said that, you know, by God's stripes we are healed. Now, in the group of the JWs, they believe it's a spiritual healing. Well, he knew that he had a child that had a club foot. And he did not want to see that child growing up with a club foot. So he and his wife got together. They said, this is what the scripture says. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray. And they did. And right in front of their eyes, that child's foot was made well. Well, immediately they knew that the word of God was real. And uh, they went back to their local kingdom hall and they reported about what God had done. And the leadership of that particular kingdom hall said, that's not, that doesn't happen. It's a spiritual healing, not a physical healing. He says, listen, there's my son. My son has been healed of a club foot. God answered our prayers. Well, we don't believe that that happened. And if you continue to subscribe to that idea, you are going to have to leave. Well, he says, you can't convince me that God didn't do this and that God doesn't heal. They said, well, you need to leave. Well, he did. And, uh, he began to, you know, seek a church that believed in healing. He came across a church that did believe in healing, and he told his story and where he came from, and they said, isn't that marvelous? And they said, would you mind praying for some people here? And he said, me? He says, I'm a former kingdom person, and you want me to pray for people? Yeah. So he did. He prayed for some people that morning, and God marvelously healed. Well, it began a healing ministry and a testimony to especially people that were involved in the Watchtower. He was actually able to win many Watchtower people because he knew their lingo. He knew how they thought. They, he knew how they worked. And he was able to navigate that, and he was able to take the scriptures because he began to read the Bible for himself, not the New World Translation, but he began to read a, a translation of the Bible that was easy to understand. And he said, all these things began to open up to me. I began to realize that God could do something. And well, guess what? He became an evangelist, eventually a pastor. He went off to Bible college and became a pastor. And the earmark of his ministry was healing. You couldn't convince him otherwise that God couldn't heal. He came across some people who were subscribed to the idea, like the JWs. He says, listen, he says, you can believe what you believe. He says, you can subscribe to whatever idea you want. But he says, in my mind and in my experience, God heals. And that's what Elijah did. God, uh, at the end of Elisha's life, he had done, if you check out the biblical record, you will find that he did twice as many miracles as Elijah. And the last miracle was that uh, there was a young uh, there was a, a bunch of people that were having a um, a funeral. And all of a sudden, some raiders come along, some bandits come along. So what do they do? They put his body, the body of the boy, into Elijah, Elisha's tomb. And uh, that boy rises up from the dead. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine having your own bones, having the power of God where people are raised up from the dead? I'll tell you something. That is the power of God. And, you know, that was Old Testament. God came upon Elisha. Today, we have resurrection power. So today, whatever it is that you need, if God grants it to you, thank the Lord for it. Remember, 
Before you even open your mouth, the answer is already on the way. Daniel 9, 23 and Daniel 10, 12. Just simple instructions, simple examples of how God can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. It's important that we ask. That's what prayer is all about. And also as well, standing on the word of God. Or as the song says, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Let's stand on the promises of the word of God. Let's express them in prayer. And let's believe God for miracles today. Whatever that miracle entails, we'll leave it up to him. But let's stand on the word of God today and allow it to become part of our natural process of life. My name is Robert Dean Steele. I hope that you've enjoyed our time of prayer today and teaching. And also as well, if you like what you've been hearing, subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the like button. Have yourself a great and godly day.